morning guys, it's almost the new year so I thought I'd do a video on healthy habits that I've changed in 2017 that maybe you can take over into 2018. Number one is drink more water. I know you all know that you have to drink loads of water but I always have water with me. Our body's made up of like 60% water so if you don't get water then your bodies can't function properly so drink more water. Number two is practice mindfulness. I used to be a person that couldn't focus on one thing at a time. If I was doing something, I'd always be thinking about something else and then being like, oh, I have to do that. And my mind was always racing about other things I needed to do. Being mindful of what I'm doing has really, really helped me. And practicing mindfulness was so hard at the beginning. Once you're aware of yourself wandering off into like these different thoughts when you're actually meant to be doing something, you then can start to be like, no, and then bring it back. And now I'm mindful of everything like especially when I'm eating I'm not eating and watching something and not aware of what I'm eating I'm eating and focusing on the food and um, when I go for walks and things like that most of the time I don't have my phone with me so I won't be listening to podcasts or audiobooks or things like that I will do that when I set aside time to listen to podcasts and audiobooks so that I'm fully aware and present things that you didn't even notice that were there you start to take in so practicing mindfulness is is a really really great one that's helped me this year a lot. So number three is try and lessen the amount of coffee that you have. I got told that I couldn't have caffeine anymore, I wasn't allowed to have coffee so I cut it out completely, I was cold turkey with it so I think it's been about 80 days, 79.85 days, so basically 80 days um, since I've had coffee. I just feel more awake and alert and I can go to bed earlier and my mind's not ticking and I think it's okay if if you only have a coffee every now and then but I was a person that relied on coffee to get things done so if I had to learn like a dance routine or focus all of my time on something then I couldn't do it my brain just wouldn't let me do it because I just get overwhelmed and be like ah I need a coffee to do this so I relied on on the caffeine to get me through the things I've noticed massive improvements I still have decaf coffee every now and then so I'm still getting the antioxidants and the benefits from coffee beans but yeah I don't rely on the caffeine anymore and that has made me feel so much better. Number four is listing. I list weekly, but I used to list daily. When I would list daily, I would write like, okay, Monday I need to do this, 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 and this. And if I didn't get those things done on the Monday, then one or two things will have to go over onto the Tuesday, which I'd already have a list for. And then it'd be like, okay, I've got to do this and this from Monday, and then these extra things that will then all fold over into Wednesday and I'd be stressing myself out more because I'd be like oh, I've got two extra things to do today and then on Wednesday I'd have four extra things to do and then on Thursday I might have done one of the extra things so then I've got five extra things to do so it was stressing me out doing it daily so I ended up just writing a oh, I've got one here actually I just write a list weekly on things I need to do things I need to do daily like walk my puppy meditate and things like that I write that down I and mean, just write one, two, three, four, five, six, seven next to it. Just write down your weekly goals and things that you need to get done because if you write them down daily, it does get a bit overwhelming if you don't get around to doing them. Number five is meditation. At the beginning of the year, I couldn't meditate at all. So at first I would start with guided meditations. I listened to a guy called Jason Stevenson who was amazing, but I couldn't, because I wasn't practicing mindfulness, I was still kind of focusing on other things when I was meant to be meditating. So he'll be saying like, okay imagine you're on a beach and like, saying all these things that were meant to like calm you down and for your brain to focus on where the the meditation was going but I would be thinking about that and then my brain would go over to something else and then I'd be on there for like two minutes and then my brain will realize and be like oh no you need to get back to meditation and so I kept going back and forth with guided meditations but now I've I've practiced meditation a lot and now I feel like I'm fine to do meditations without being guided so I don't need to do guided visualizations or things like that if I've had like a, a normal day then I will just meditate without music and that's something I'm able to do now where at the beginning of the year I couldn't even do a guided meditation so if you have tried meditating it hasn't really worked be consistent with it and don't just think oh, okay this meditation is not for me do stick with it okay number six is cutting down processed foods so think of it this way if you're putting the wrong fuel into a car that car's gonna eventually conk out and it's not gonna run smoothly. So if you're putting processed foods into your body, your body's eventually gonna conk out and not run smoothly. Whereas if you put good food into your body, the food that your body needs, it's just gonna thrive on that and you're gonna feel really healthy and alive and happy. And your body can't break down processed foods as well as it can fruits and veggies and grains and legumes and things like that. So 
put good food into your body and feel great. Number seven is walking in nature. So taking your dog for a walk or just going out in nature and just taking a walk by yourself. As I said before, I don't listen to podcasts or audiobooks or music or anything when I go for a walk. And when you go out for walks, it really helps your mind and you're exercising without even knowing it. And yeah, it's just getting out of the house or out of your workplace or if you're sitting down all day, you're just gonna feel sluggish. So just getting out and walking really makes you feel 10 times better. Number eight is cut out alcohol or maybe lessen the amount of alcohol that you're having because I have a really addictive personality and once I start something my body craves more of it so I stopped drinking on the 5th of November 2016 so this isn't something I've done in 2017 but I have carried it on through 2017 and hopefully will carry it on my whole life because I don't want to touch alcohol again. It's kind of normal now to stick poison in your body and I'm so much better off without it. I'm sure even if you don't rely on alcohol or don't feel like you have a problem with it, I feel like drinking less or cutting it out completely is gonna change everything because you are putting so much bad chemicals and everything into your body and you don't realize that because it's just a drink. But yeah, try and cut it out as, as much as you can because it's not good for you. Number nine is reading. When I was younger, I used to read a lot, but then when I became a teenager and into adulthood, I just kind of stopped reading. But now reading has just become part of my daily routine. And other night time, I'll get ready for bed and then I'll read a chapter or two and then that'll make me tired enough to go to sleep. Before I started reading, I used to be on my iPad and on my laptop and on my phone, looking at YouTube videos, watching films, being on Instagram and things like that. And that's not what your body needs before you go to bed because your mind is still active and it's ticking. So reading a book has really, really helped me before bed. Reading is something that I thought I'd never really be interested in, but I'm now really interested in it. So go to your library, grab a book or two that you'd like and yeah, start reading. Number 10 is walking or cycling to places that you wouldn't usually walk or cycle to. I don't drive, but I, w I was very against it for a while because of the environment and everything and so I would get buses and trains and cycle to places and I've noticed the convenience of people driving like when my brother would come round I have a shop literally like a two minute walk away he would drive to that and then drive back and I don't know why you would do that it probably takes just as long in the car as it does walking and you're wasting fuel you're wasting time because somewhere that close is just gonna it's gonna take you longer to drive on tuesdays and thursdays i work about 15 minute drive away from me but because i don't drive i walk there sometimes i do get the bus sometimes i do get a lift if my mum's going to work at a certain time but i walk there and back that takes me about an hour but i enjoy that walk so much if you're going to somewhere that's maybe like a 10 minute drive away from you a five minute drive even just consider walking or cycling to those places because it's just going to make you feel 10 times better just exercising, getting out into fresh air and you're just being super lazy if you drive somewhere that's so close to you. Number 11 is decluttering your space. So as most of you know, I am a minimalist. I'm not like an extreme minimalist that counts all their things but I do have things that add value to my life and bring joy and happiness to me. So I know exactly what I have. Minimalism has really helped with keeping things tidy because I don't have a lot of things so I don't really need to have a lot of mess because the, I can't really create much mess with the things I have. So I feel like when things are cluttered and when things are like messy, my mind is messy and I can't think clearly when things aren't organised and in a, in a space where they should be. When I think of mess I just think of like, I don't know, it just kind of stresses me out when things are messy. But decluttering your space is key and only having things that bring value to your life. Get rid of things that you don't necessarily need. Number 12 is try to stop using chemicals on your body. I don't understand why companies put them in their products. Um, so I use a fluoride free toothpaste. I don't use SLS in anything. Um, I use coconut oil as my moisturiser. For shampoo I use soap nuts so I don't have any chemicals in them. Um, and then I don't actually put anything on my hair. Any products or anything. Um, deodorant I use bicarbonate of soda or I have this stick that is like paraben free, alcohol free and doesn't have bad things in. So using chemicals on your body is just as bad as smoking, drinking alcohol, chemicals. Just harmful chemicals that you shouldn't be putting on your body, in your body, around your body. <laughs> 13 is stop apologising for things that you're not sorry for. Obviously if you are generally sorry for something, do say sorry. I'm not saying don't say sorry for anything, but as a vegan, when I'm in a non-vegan restaurant and I ask for things without milk in or 
I'm like, oh, could you check if that has egg in it? And then I'm like, sorry to be annoying. I'm not sorry. Why do I say sorry? I'm, I'm not apologising for that. So I've stopped doing that now. And that doesn't mean that I'm just rude. <laughs> because if I am generally sorry, I will obviously apologise. Number 14 is don't put things off. I had a rule at the beginning of this year that if it takes no longer than two minutes, get it done straight away. If you need to get something done, do it, don't put it off because you're going to be worrying about it and thinking about it and it's still going to be playing on your mind and going to bog you down so if you need to get something done just do it straight away and then you won't have to think about it and stress about it and be worried about it, just get it done. It's so easy to say oh I'll do that in five minutes or I'll do that once I've done this or I'll do that tomorrow because then tomorrow is the next day and the next day and the next day, just get it done straight away. I've lost track of the numbers, start saying yes to things. I used to be a very no person, I was very comfortable where I was and comfort isn't going to get you anywhere. If you stay where you're comfortable, that's not going to do anything. Things that kind of excite you but scare you a little bit. Say yes to it because you don't know what's going to come of it, but equally do say no to things. If you feel like you've got too much on your plate and this comes up, don't be like, yeah, okay, I'm doing it because I'm getting out of my comfort zone. If you do need time off, you do need a break, say no, I, I need to give myself this time. The things I've said yes to, for the most part, have just really excited me and good things have come from it and if, if someone told me like six months ago that I'd be at the job I am now doing the courses that I've done and the projects that I've got to work on at the minute I would have said no to a lot of the things that I've said yes to so amazing things have come from me saying yes visualize what you want and believe in it and create it because nothing good has ever come from people that don't believe in themselves and people that don't visualise their dreams and their passions. If you're working as like a baker in Greg's or something, but you want to own your own restaurant one day, if you're focusing here and only thinking about what your job is like here and not visualising and believing that you can be a chef and having your own restaurant and creating that reality, you're just always going to be stuck in Greg's. I feel like this is a really bad analogy, but I'm going to stick with it. So if you keep focusing on this job, you're never going to get to this job. Whereas if you are visualising this, then your energy is going where your attention is going. If your attention is going up to this job, then your energy is going to go up to this job. And then eventually, you're not going to be working in Greg's anymore. You're going to own your own restaurant because you've believed in yourself and you've created your own reality. You're visualising what you want. Your attention is going that way. And eventually you're going to get there because if all of your energy is going into this job, then there's no reason for that not to work. The next one is meal planning. And this can go with meal prepping, but for me, I don't need to meal prep because I'm lucky enough to have time in the day to make my own food when I need it. And if I don't, if I have got something on the next day, then I will make my food of an evening so I have the food for the next day. Meal planning has been great because you know what you need to buy at the shops and you don't buy excess. It keeps you eating healthily and it stops you from having those, those treats that are kind of like, oh, well, you know, I'll have this for dinner. Or should we order a takeaway? If you have a meal plan and you've taken the time to write out a meal plan, thinking about what you're going to eat for the next week, then you want to stick to that because you've taken the time to do it. So stick to it. The next one is taking time on social media. So I've completely got rid of my Twitter account. I think it's still out there, but I don't think, I didn't delete my account. I've just deleted all the apps and I don't get any notifications through or anything. So I don't have Twitter anymore. I deleted Facebook from June. I went on it the other day because I needed to sign up for Anonymous for the Voiceless and it was only done through Facebook. And then I had like 52 messages from people <laughs> from June. I did look at all those messages and I did reply to some people. And I've posted twice on there since then, but I don't need Facebook. There's so much negativity on there and yeah, it can be used for good. But people just post so many negative things on there and like people just use it as an outlet for moaning and that's just not what I'm about. And I kind of did used to be that person. I did used to moan on social media all the time. That was the old peer and now I'm a different peer. <laughs> so I deleted my Snapchat, which I did spend basically my whole life on. I would spend every second of every day on Snapchat. So I deleted Snapchat. I stopped using Facebook and Twitter as well. And the only thing I did have was Instagram, but I didn't use my personal account anymore. I only used this account. I just felt so much more positivity that I wasn't dragging in other people's negativity and when something would happen to me with past peer when something would happen to me i would then tweet about it i don't understand why i did that because that's not going to help the situation at all it's just going to let other people know that you're going through a bad time and people don't care and what i've learned is that i would kind of use it as an outlet to tell people what was happening in my life and 99 percent of those people 
that follow you on Twitter don't care. It's made me realise that I don't need to share with the world what's going on in my life. If I have a problem, then I go to someone who I know will actually help me with the problem and deal with the problem with me. Instead of <laughs> tweeting to like a thousand people, not that I had, I don't even know how many followers I had, um, that tweet into like a bunch of people that aren't going to do anything about it. So taking time on social media has been a huge help. And the last one is kind of changing your mindset to know that it's okay. Since I was four, I've been dancing and acting and then singing kind of got involved. And then I have ba basically, that's all I've known. I've known performing my whole life. And I did a few jobs and things here and there. And I did enjoy it at the time, I guess, because that was kind of all I knew. And when you're deciding your options for GCSE, it's kind of like, okay, well, I've known performing all my life, so I'll take performing arts. So I took performing arts, then I went to dance college, and then realised that's not who I am. And I wasn't the kind of person that could deal with the industry, because it's such a hard industry, and obviously the people that do it, do it really well. And I couldn't give 100% of myself to it, because obviously, in my head, I knew that that's not what I really wanted to do with my life. I basically, I quit. And I still had to pay off the money and everything, but I quit there because I knew that it wasn't aligning with my values and I don't want to be in a crop top and shorts every single day looking in the mirror for like eight hours of my day. It's just, not, it's not healthy for my mind and some people can obviously deal with it and that's great. I have friends that are doing really, really well in the industry and they love it and that's great, but it wasn't for me. I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I knew that I didn't want to perform and so I quit and that was fine and it wasn't the easiest option, the easiest option would have been for me to carry on my course and even if I did see the course through, I wouldn't have pursued it as a career and not that I didn't really believe in myself but just because my, my passion wasn't there so I quit and that was fine. I was kind of lost for a bit but now I've found my way and it's probably the best thing I've ever done. Stopping that has opened me to so many other things so I've now found new passions and new things in my life that I want to pursue and I'm so excited about those things I'm so excited for my future and if you asked me like a year ago my future would be performing in the West End that was like what I wanted to do the fact that that's not even a part of what I want to do now is is, is crazy because my passions have changed and my beliefs have changed and yeah it's, it's okay to have new passions although I did kind of get a lot of stick for it because people did think I was quitting and giving up and I wasn't giving up well, I was, but I was given up for better reasons. It was because I knew that I didn't want that in my life anymore. Another thing is it's okay to give yourself time off because sometimes your body does need a rest. And when I was at dance college, I was there nine... In the summer, I was there from like eight o'clock in the morning till like half 11 at night sometimes doing show work and, and then be there again for eight o'clock the next morning. So I'd be doing that Monday to Friday and then I'd be teaching in London on the Saturday and then sometimes there'll be rehearsals on the Sunday as well at college and my body was just go, go, go all the time and when you get to that, your body's gonna eventually have a breakdown <laughs> because your body can't deal with that amount of energy being used on no sleep and not eating right your body needs it sometimes, your mind needs it sometimes and it's okay to give yourself a break if you feel like you need a day off work because you just need a day off that's fine take it off, like know your body and allow yourself to have time off. The last bit of the it's okay portion is it's okay to feel excited, it's okay to feel low, it's okay to feel sad, it's okay to feel happy, it's okay to feel joy, it's okay to feel confused. Feelings are fine, people shy away from feelings and feel like oh no I shouldn't be feeling this. Your body's feeling those feelings for a reason and sometimes that reason is you need a break, sometimes that reason is you're about to start a new job and you're kind of nervous. Your body is feeling those feelings because that's the reaction of seeing something or hearing something or knowing something. Like, it's okay to feel. Everybody feels. And there's a taboo subject about feeling down and low and it's kind of like, oh, you can't feel those feelings because you must be excited and happy all the time. No. It's okay to feel low. It's okay to feel sad. It's okay to cry and it's okay to feel anger and stress. But then equally, it's okay to feel joy, it's okay to feel excitement, it's okay to feel happy, it's okay to feel nervous. Feelings are fine and that's something I've learned this year because I used to shy away from my feelings so much because I used to feel down quite a lot and I was like, oh, this isn't normal, people don't feel like this. But people do feel like that. 
People have down days, people have down weeks, people feel things the same as you feel things and that's fine and it's it's beautiful because if we don't experience grief and if we don't experience pain then we're not going to appreciate excitement and joy and happiness and all of those positive feelings so it's okay to feel. It's okay that you're being you and that you're living your life right now and it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks because it's okay that you're doing what you're doing right now. So I'm going to end the video there. I feel like that was a very long video but hopefully you've got something out of it even if it's just one thing that you do change like the reading or the meditating or walking out in nature or meal planning but hopefully it did give you a little insight to what's helped me in in 2017 and maybe you can try to do those things in 2018. I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you want to see videos on minimalism, veganism, zero waste, self-love, natural living and if you've got any comments or anything you'd like to say then please do comment below and if you want us to do any certain videos then let us know because we're happy to do them. I hope 2018 is full of joy, happiness, life changes and new adventures.